Well, what's up, guys, and welcome to Scourge of War Waterloo, episode 31, part 3. We are about three hours into the Battle of Ligny here as the Prussians. And in the last video, uh, things escalated uh, pretty quickly. Uh, we're now engaged all along the line from uh, Wagnerly down through St. Armand at Ligny, as well as the Tangrain, Tangrenel area. Uh, so we're engaged at all points along the line at this point. Um, we've been engaged by about three divisions uh, over between Wagnerly and uh, and Saint Armand, uh, two divisions at Ligny, and uh, one division uh, and some cavalry uh, that hasn't really gotten involved yet over at the Tangrenel area. So <clears throat> things are starting to heat up a little bit. Uh, we're getting close to the midpoint of the battle. Uh, and uh, let's pick things up uh, where we left off here at 1730, exactly where we ended the last uh, video. Uh, so here we go with uh, part three of The Old Fox Fights Back. So right where we left off here, we're over in the Tangrenel area, and uh, I had begun to uh, uh, refine my position over here. Uh, and I'm setting up a little bit of a defense on the extreme left. I don't really expect the French to make any serious effort on that part of the line, but I just have it there, uh, just in case. So I've got an artillery battery as well as uh, one regiment of infantry over there. Uh, way, uh, way out of range, like I said, they're just kind of a... a the end of the road of our extreme left here uh, and I don't really expect any kind of serious attack on that position there's nothing to be gained by it um, and the, the French don't really have a lot of troops over there uh, so they're just there's just the end kind of the end of the road just my last uh, last forces on the extreme left uh, and over here is where we have um, the bulk of uh, von Thielmann's uh, Third Corps set up kind of along this uh, main road here, going uh, running across the uh, the creek and down towards the the French positions around Ligny and Fleurus. And uh, really, I'm just bringing some infantry up to put them in square because there's really nothing over here but cavalry. And by setting some squares up, uh, we're basically making it impossible for them to approach. Um, I have one artillery battery on the left over here, as well as one set up across the road on the right. Uh, the French have artillery set up back here, but way too far away to be of any real effectiveness. And uh, Hugh Lott's division, which was the division that attacked us in the last video, uh, has been largely repulsed. They've fallen back. They only have a couple of battalions left. Um, uh, and and they've fallen they've fallen back kind of out of range <clears throat> where we can really uh, do uh, any kind of we also have a lot of troops over here uh, that aren't even engaged yet so here we are at Saint Armand we have been pressed really heavily uh, over the last couple of hours uh, our skirmisher line has fallen back uh, we have basically two skirmisher units out in front of the town here and they've done an amazing job these skirmish units as long as we keep them in ammo they've been doing amazing um our first skirmish unit that we had over here did in fact route after fighting for hours and killing nearly 500 men uh so we've replaced them with a fresher unit but as you can see the french are ever stubborn and uh continuing to to, to come forward and and make repeated attempts at trying to get this town uh and the church is really the, really the defining factor as far as getting your uh, foothold on Saint Armand. As long as we can hold that church, uh, we can hold the town. And as long as everything is pretty stable, again, I'm going to continue building up my secondary line of uh, uh, of fortresses and horsey forts. So I've brought in some new troops over from Purchase Corps, and we're going to start setting them up. Uh, on the extreme right of that position and I'm just I'm taking just re basically going by regiment at this point you know we have three or four battalions in a regiment so I'll take two put them out in front and in square I'll take one put them in line behind the guns to be a source of skirmishers and these little units uh, 
you know, I'll take them and split them off and uh, send them over to the church in St. Armand. Even though it's a long walk, uh, the more reserves over there, the better, because uh, we want to hold on to the church for as long as possible. So I will just send them on over, have them use roads, just march over. Whenever they get there, they get there. We already have like three units over here that are ready to act as our reserve. So our boys inside the church, they're tired, but they're doing great. They've only taken one casualty, and they inflicted like 140 casualties. And that's because while they're close enough to be engaged, they have the skirmishers out there in front of the church actually screening them. Uh, so they aren't taking as many casualties as if the, uh, they would if the French could get a lot closer to the church and actually bring fire against it from multiple sides. So we have uh, more and more to watch over at this point as, the, like I said, the battle has flared up uh, pretty much along our entire front here. So it's just about bouncing back and forth between these different hot spots of St. Armand, Wagnally, uh, St. Armand La High, um, Ligny, and uh, the Tagrain area, as well as finding a few moments here and there to continue building our secondary line here that we'll need later in the battle when the French decide to go into serious mode. And so I'm just bringing these units up, forming square. And uh, setting up the fortress, and I'm just kind of moving from left, uh, from right to left as I build this up. Um, and uh, like we're to start hooking it now further to the left to basically create a semicircle, uh, kind of right behind Ligny. Uh, so all these troops, when this town gets outflanked on either side, will have a place to fall back to. So this is uh, Purchase Corps back here. As you can see, we just have a ton of troops to, to, to draw from uh, to set up this fort, uh, this row of fortresses. We have cavalry, we have infantry, we have artillery, we have everything. And what I'm doing with these guns is I'm trying to gauge how far apart I want them. Because I'm not trying to set up just a row of fortresses here. I'm trying to go fortress, horsey fort, fortress, horsey fort, fortress, horsey fort. Um, because when you're approached by a combination of infantry and cavalry, um, the squares will certainly deal with the cavalry. But what you want to try and avoid is the infantry being able to move forward and shoot up the squares but stay outside of canister range. If they can do that, then they can start to shoot up your squares and they're not really taking a lot of casualties uh, from the artillery if they're outside of canister range. Um, so what the horsey fort does is forces the infantry, if they're gonna come forward, they have to form square too. Uh, and that does two things. One, it makes them a lot more immobile once they form square. You're kind of, they're kind of stuck there. So if they do it and they're within canister range, they're going to catch a beating. If they don't do it, uh, well, then they're engaging the squares on equal footing. And if I, can, if I can find a place to slip some skirmishers out in front of the squares, if there's no cavalry around, uh, then I can get the better of it uh, as far as dealing with the, uh, the enemy squares. So really, the, the, the concept of linking the, the 
fortresses and the horsey forts uh, kind of interlinked like that uh, is that I'm able to deal with uh, multiple levels of combined arms that might be brought against me uh, in terms of uh, infantry and cavalry. Um, and I'm in a position where I don't have to constantly keep changing uh, formations to meet different arms. I can just stay as I am and the formation will actually be able to handle uh, different types of arms on its own. And that, that's kind of the goal of, of what the, the Horsey Forts and the Fortresses do together. The goal of all of this, of course, is always to be able to use your artillery. That's the area where we have the advantage because, as I've said many times before, the AI does not really attack with its artillery, at least not very well. Uh, it, it, you know, there's multiple ways to turn the, the, the enemy artillery around and stop them from bringing them into really effective uh, ranges, whereas we're setting this all up ahead of time, uh, you know, further back behind the line, so that when the French come to advance towards us, we've already got it all set up, and our guns are already uh, going to be at, in close range, uh, just by virtue of the setup and the, the fact that the French are going to be advancing towards us. Um, and the, the fortresses and the horsey forts, all of that goes to... Uh, protect the guns so that they can do their deadly work and not take losses and, and run away and rout. Um, and, you know, just by uh, experimenting over, you know, the years and refining, uh, refining how the fortress works and uh, then coming up with the horsey fort to interact with it, it it's basically ways to uh, deal with anything that the enemy might throw at me still be able to stop them in their tracks, still be able to not take the worst of it, and, uh, of course, have our guns at close range, which is the ultimate advantage. So all of this is about just being able to use artillery at close range, which is why I go through such a... Uh, uh, why I'm very particular about where I place the squares so that they're able to protect the guns but still have the guns have a wide field of fire so that anything that approaches them gets, you know, they get the boom. And, uh, you know, once you get into these, you know, the core and the army scenarios like this, you're able, because you just have a lot more troops under your command, um, you're really able to use it a lot more uh, to its maximum effectiveness than you would in, say, like, you know, brigade and division scenarios where you just don't have the number of troops under your command uh, that you would be able to effectively set up, you know, you know large swaths of this formation. Which is why the, you know, the army scenarios are my favorite, because I just have so many more troops under my command, and I can kind of do anything I want. And um, no matter where action seems to pop up, uh, you know, there's always, there's always troops available to, uh, to kind of get these formations set up uh, to handle any threat that may come at them. So, uh, all right, here's our extreme left over here. And like I said, they're pretty far away from anything. Uh, yeah, so, I'm not really expecting... Uh, I just have them there because if anything does advance at them, I'll be able to set up a, you know one fortress with it. It'll slow things down until I can shift some troops over there. Um, but I, like I said, I'm really not expecting that to happen. Any attack I expect to come kind of in this area, you know, up this road or maybe from across the way. There's some you know, French cavalry over here, but there's not too much down here. All right, so we're just uh, holding our positions here. We're holding on to the objectives. We've repulsed a lot of these initial French attacks now. We've uh, repulsed at least three divisions of Van Damme's corps. He's got quite the bloody nose at this point. Um, we've repulsed both show and Vichery's division of Girard's corps at Ligny, and we've approached, repulsed his other division, Hulot's division, at Tongrein and Tongrenel. So the French are at kind of a standstill right now. Um, we can hold on right now, and really what it's going to be is, uh, as we get into the later hours of the battle here, where are the French going to send the forces that they're, they're getting later on? Where are they going to send... Where are they going to send the 6th Corps? Where are they going to send some of the cavalry that's coming? Where are they going to send, most importantly, where are they going to send the Imperial Guard? Because 
the Imperial Guard are just trouble, no matter where they go. The thing about the Imperial Guard, when you're going to face the Imperial Guard, is you want to try to draw them in a, into a firefight. Uh, something that's going to negate their troop quality. Uh, now, troop quality doesn't play such a huge effect in just a firefight, like, say, we got going on right over here, where we're just standing here shooting at each other. It'll mean those troops won't break and run as, as fast as normal troops will. But other than that, troop quality doesn't make you fire a rifle any, any better than, um, you know, normal troops. Where the troop quality really comes into play is in, in melee. And, like I said, in hand-to-hand -hand combat, the Imperial Guard does not lose because their troop quality is just like orders of magnitude better than ours are. Um, so we don't want to get into hand... Well, one thing we do not want to do is get into a situation where we're being charged by the Imperial Guard. We're not going to hold. We're going to lose every one of them. Um, so whenever we see that they're going to commit the Guard, uh, you know, we want to try and set up a situation where we'll, we won't have to fight them hand-to-hand -hand because that's how we're going to get our tails kicked. So as you can see, the French are starting to shift some of their artillery over um, over from the Ligny area towards uh, kind of the gap between Saint Armand and uh, and Ligny. And while I was talking about fighting the Imperial Guard, I detached detached some skirmishers. You can see them right here to turn those guns around. And I you can see here they come. And I sent some skirmishers out. It's just artillery, although they have some cavalry coming behind it now. And like I said, this is some of those French reinforcements now. Um, and I want to turn these guns around. I don't want them to get anywhere near the flank of our position, so I'm running these skirmishers out there just to turn them around. Uh, I'm not interested in capturing them. All that is is a skirmisher unit. Uh, I just want them to turn around and set up far away from this position here. And in the meantime, I'm shifting my position to kind of face more this way. I'm turning my guns. Uh, I'll start to set up squares and turn this into a fortress. Uh, because I see cavalry coming. I don't know what else is coming, uh, but I want to be ready. Because at this point in the battle now, we are off the script. Meaning, I can no longer tell you what it is the French are going to do. Because now it's different every time. Uh, I've played this scenario many times, and, you know, by three, four hours into the battle, you're on your own as far as what the French are going to do, where they're going to send their reinforcements. Yes, I can always tell you at the beginning of the scenario, uh, you know, Van Damme's Corps is going to attack the St. Armand uh, position, starting from St. Armand, moving their way up towards St. Armand, La Haye, and Wagnerly. Yes, I can tell you, Gerard will always attack Ligny with Pichot's division and then Vichery's division. Hulot will always go for the Tongrein area. Uh, those things are constants. Uh, everything we've seen so far are constants. Meaning those will always happen every time you play the scenario. Um, but at this point now, nearing the halfway point through the scenario, I can no longer tell you everything the French are going to do. Because it's going to be different every single time now. I can't tell you where they're going to send the Imperial Guard. I can't tell you... Where, I can tell you in, in this playthrough, of course, because I've already played it. But... These are no longer constants, uh, and you're going to have to be flexible and think on your feet and be ready to meet um, the French wherever they choose to commit the Sixth Corps, wherever they choose to commit this cavalry that's coming, wherever they choose to commit the Imperial Guard. Um, you know, generally speaking, it's either going to be St. Armand or Ligny. You know, they're going to mo move towards one of those two positions. Uh, and, and sometimes it'll be a division of uh, uh, of troops, meaning they're not going to commit all their troops just towards Saint Armand or all their troops just towards Ligny. Um, you know, it, it could be it could be divided up amongst those two locations, and you just never exactly know what's coming. Um, so you just got to be flexible and be ready. This is a good position we have set up at Ligny here. Um, we're going to be able to hold any attack directly into the town. Um, the only thing you want to make sure of is when is our flank in trouble. Now these these units here, this cavalry, they're heading this way. They're heading towards the gap between Saint Armand and Ligny. So our flank is not threatened yet. Um, and we're just bringing our skirmishers back to. Uh, they've done their job of turning the artillery around. Um, 
but we're gonna bring some units and, like I said, set up squares to stop this cavalry to protect the guns, and uh, you know, hopefully we can blow some nice holes in that cavalry as they approach. And hopefully we can keep the church occupied and these skirmishers will keep all these uh, troops at bay. Although, look at this. Ooh, not good. We are about to get hit in the flank. I see it. I'm withdrawing. Uh, but the French have, uh, the French are turning up the, the attack here. And uh, they're at last trying to get the skirmishers out of here and actually directly engage the church themselves. Okay, we can recall that skirmisher group now. They did their job of uh, turning the guns around. The cavalry has paused there. So I, uh, they were kind of right in the middle there between the gap uh, between St. Armand and Ligny. They could go either way. They're facing St. Armand, so that's where I think they want to eventually head for. But right now they're hanging back. They're just sitting there, and they're kind of... Uh, Kind of waiting to see what's happening with the uh, the Saint Armand position that's being attacked a little more aggressively again uh, by the French. In the meantime, though, that'll give us time to uh, set this position up here so that we're able to meet anything that's coming on, going to come in through here. Luckily, there's a creek here that should slow the cavalry's movement down and some woods, so we should be able to set up. Uh, you know, some square, a square here, put some skirmishers in front, screen the guns. We've got all that going on already. But at this point in the battle now is where you really got to start watching. Everything I've done so far has been virtually by the book, by the script, meaning I've it happens every time that way. Um, and, uh, you know, most of what I've done so far has just been routine uh, in that it's the same thing I do you know, every time I play the scenario. Um, but now, at this point, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I mean, obviously, I do because I'm, I've played the whole scenario. I know what's going to happen in this playthrough. But as I'm playing the scenario, at this point, I don't know what's going to happen anymore. So here, the cavalry are moving forward again. We're intercepting courier messages from Hulot. We've really kicked the crap out of him over there. It's the Tom Grind area. And I'm moving this unit, and I'm trying to get them to move forward without crossing the creek, because the creek actually will really slow down your movement, and I don't want to slow down their movement. So even though I'm not moving them to the position I want them, I'm moving them forward and just keeping them from crossing the creek. Once they're forward here of the guns, then I can just move them over, and they didn't do this. Instead, they did this. So they didn't have to go across the creek. Bingo! See? So uh, that's kind of how you can use movement to avoid uh, terrain that you don't want to cross. Just don't move them to that location right away. If you can, you know, if you can move them somewhere where they don't have to cross the the creek, and then move them to the position you want them, and they didn't have to cross the creek, it's actually faster than just setting their location and then letting them cross the creek and take a longer time to get there. We'd still be back by the creek right now if they. Uh, you know, here they come. Here they come. So they're really starting to push forward from the west side now. And uh, our skirmishers are falling back. So at this point they're now going to be able to start engaging the church directly. But uh, maybe we can sneak some units onto their flank and shoot them out of there. So I'm watching this cavalry closely now to see what it is they're going to do. And that's a courier from La Folle's division who's been virtually shot to pieces at this point. So we have almost 15,000 points so far. We're about three and a half hours into the battle. Um, 
and we need 19,000 points for a major victory. So we still have to hold these objective locations a little while longer uh, before we can uh, be sure we'll have a major victory. And then we can think about, you know, uh, uh, withdrawing if our, uh, if our situation becomes too perilous. But right now we're still okay. We've still got a good, good hold on both St. Armand, Ligny, and this area here. And I'm watching this cavalry back here. They don't really appear to be making any kind of moves. All my units are pretty good shape. They're not taking losses. Anytime units are in square, I'll just I'll just check up on them because squares are just more prone to take artillery losses. So uh, more French units are moving in towards Ligny here. They're definitely making a real effort here at this point. I'm going to move this little line unit here in and uh, attempt to shoot them as they ad uh, advance in column. You know, there's a line unit in front of them, there's a skirmisher unit in front of them. Uh, they're going to have to make a lot of charges uh, to try and break this if that's what they're going to do. I'm actually going to charge right into them. Because this is a big 600 man unit. Oh, caught them while they were trying to form line. Wow. I thought they were going to charge, but they at the last second there, they started to form line. And they got hit while they were reforming. Uh, and they got hit really hard because of that. They should have just charged. I don't know why they were trying to change formation at that point. So we see some cavalry, one cavalry squadron moving over towards the uh, LaFolle's old position. Uh south of St. Armand. And nothing really going on over at, uh, by St. Armand La High. And as a result of that, I'm going to start siphoning units away from that position. Which is somewhat risky. I'm definitely opening up gaps in my lines, but I'm basically gambling that uh, I've done enough damage to those divisions that they're not going to try and attack again. And I'm just leaving skirmishers to hold that position in the line. But there's really nothing over there right now. And, uh, you know, given my experience playing the scenario, I know that that's not really going to become a hot spot again. I know when the French reinforcements come up, they really go for St. Armand or Ligny or some combination thereof. So I got one squadron here that's taken a few losses, so I'm just going to back them off. Obviously some artillery battery has found some range on them. So I'll just move them a ways off and uh, see if we can uh, stop them from taking losses. And uh, like I said, the French have captured the fort, uh, the castle here at Ligny. Um, so really, uh, they can start moving into the town at any time they want. The problem is I have skirmisher units set up uh, to screen uh, my main line back behind the creek there. If they want to charge those skirmisher units, it's going to bring them in range of canister fire, and they probably won't survive. So their only real alternative is to try and clear those skirmishers out by, uh, by shooting them out, by just firing at them. And... Obviously, that's where skirmishers do best, is when they're engaged with line infantry. In a shooting match, they are usually going to get the better of it, <clears throat> because uh, that's just how skirmishers work in this game. So, uh, all right, things are again stable for uh, a few minutes. The cavalry has kind of stopped in their place uh, in that gap between St. Armand and Ligny. So again, let's try and bring a few units over and uh, get some more fortress going here. And... Uh, Again, I'm just moving them by, by regiment, bringing all the units over, and then once they get here, I will place them where I want them to be in the formation. So they're moving, and I'm just, again, I'm just grabbing these regiments and pulling them over so that I uh, have them in position. We also need to get some more guns over here uh, to help... Uh, Basically, we have to fill in this whole this whole area over here. 
So I'm just bringing the infantry over to set them up. Then I'll bring the artillery over and start shooting stuff. We still have plenty of time. Um, it's 1800, so it's mm, 6 o'clock. And the battle goes to around 930 uh, or 2130. So we have plenty of time to keep setting this up. Um, and the French have still made no, no headway. Uh, in trying to take Ligny. We're still basically occupying the same positions we set up at the beginning of the battle. Uh, other than the, the, the castle, of course, we have lost the castle. Um, and uh, I knew, like I said, I knew that was going to happen, but uh, Pichot spent a good deal of his division trying to capture that castle. So uh, it, was, it, was, it was good in terms of uh, how long we actually delayed Pichot's division from capturing it. Yep, they're about to run out of ammo again, these skirmishers. I want to try and get a supply wagon up there and resupply them. I would really like to shoot these guys and these guys and get them out of there so I can reestablish my skirmish line in here. That was really working out well for us. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that. The French keep kind of pouring into the, uh, the western part of the town here. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens. And again, I'm siphoning off lines from my center where the action has really quieted down. Uh, because <clears throat> anything further I think that's going to happen is going to come from this side of things. So I'm starting to send some of my troops over and reinforce this position. And hopefully my center stays quiet. There goes our supply wagon. I should have double clicked them. <clears throat> These guys are down to four rounds and they are exhausted. Alright, so some of Vichery's division has again moved into the town. But uh, again, it's going to be tough for them to bring a large amount of firepower against us because they just don't have the open v uh, terrain that we do back here to just to, to bring a lot of firepower to bear. They can kind of send one or two units forward at a time and we can just shoot them up and get them out of there. And uh, Pachot's division is really not making much of an attempt to move forward past the castle. It's like they captured the castle and uh, that was all they had in them. Still no sign of Durette's division on our extreme right. So they're back up to 40 rounds. Let's get that supply wagon out of there. Uh, here come more French. Oh, they're running away. Good. Good, good, good. I've got a skirmish unit in place over here. If I can get them in here, maybe, I can shoot these guys in the back and get them out of there. If I can do that, I can set up the skirmish line in here. 
That's what I would... I don't remember what I was thinking here, but that's would be what I would be thinking about right now. So here comes a cavalry squadron. I'm not sure what's on their mind. I'm going to just tighten the square up a little bit. I really don't want them to be able to charge between the squares and get to the guns. I've got these skirmishers screening my square, so I'm really not worried about the infantry here, Ed, uh, because they're they're duking it out with the squares, uh, with the skirmishers, not really the square. Which is why I like to screen skirmisher, uh, screen squares with skirmisher units. But I am concerned about what this cavalry is doing here. What is it? Why are they moving forward? What are they trying to do? So we are at fifteen thousand six hundred fifty points need about 3,500 more points to uh, get the amount we need for a major victory and then uh, like I said we need to be able to protect that lead uh, so we're gonna hold on to those objectives for as long as we can and at the same time balance that with being able to withdraw in good order uh, so that, that we don't take a lot of loss losses as we're falling back So I think at this point I'm thinking about starting to bring the cavalry forward so I can get the horsey forts going. Because you can see they have a long way to, to go before they get into position. Uh, and since I'm going to be sp splitting those squadrons up kind of all along the line here, I'm just going to move them forward into a central position here. I must have had them all on tape charge. There they go. And then once they get here, I'll start divvying the squadrons up. And I'm just going to put them in between the squares, uh, you know, kind of here and here, and just have squadrons uh, so that as infantry approaches, if they want to engaged our squares, they themselves must form square, because they'll be in range of our cavalry. This is uh, what's left of Hugh Lot's division, not too much. We've got a very strong setup over here. This None of this cavalry can approach this because these squares are going to rip them up before they ever get near our cavalry. So, uh, strong setup over here for any. This cavalry really can't do anything against it. And this battery has been firing for a long time. Uh, and I haven't really delegated a supply wagon for them, so uh, I'm going to send one out there to refill them. So this, this uh, cavalry regiment has lost 29 men. So I'm just going to back them off a little bit. There's actually no reason for me to really have the cavalry kind of that far forward because I have squares up there. They're going to stop any advance by the French cavalry. Um, I don't really need my my cavalry up there uh, I unless I want to counterattack the, the French cavalry, and I have no reason to do that. If they want to come and tangle with these squares, let them come and they'll get repulsed by that.
So they are, these French are still trying to inch their way forward here. So uh, this cavalry squadron has just kind of stopped. And uh, yeah, this is kind of what I was, this is why I set this up, because my figuring would, would tell me that the cavalry can't really do anything here. If they come too close, they're gonna get hit by these guns and they can't charge the squares, so you know, what are they gonna do? And we forced their guns to deploy way back here. Very little going on on our right here. Uh, obviously, this is the fortress that decimated uh, Berthesine's division. There's virtually nothing left of them. I see like one battalion or uh, two battalions out there. So we pretty much decimated that division. So I don't expect that area to really heat up again. So the cavalry is now backing off. And um, we also have a second square set up here so that they can't outflank the guns either because there is a big open gap in here uh, that they could come pouring through and take our whole line from the rear. I would, of course, be able to see that before it would, you know, really take effect and be able to start forming squares and, and, and protecting that. Um, that would be kind of a bold move for the AI, though, to just throw a sweeping cavalry attack around my rear like that. So our, our ring of fortresses has now pretty much reached Ligny, and we're going to start turning it, uh, and turning it into a semicircle and bending it back on the Sombref. And uh, we're just waiting for our cavalry to come forward. They should be on the move. Yep, here they come. But... Uh, we need some more infantry, and we need some more cannon. So we have plenty of cannon back here, and uh, probably begin pulling from them and bringing them forward. So yeah, at this point, the battle has gotten pretty big, hasn't it, guys? We're definitely handling a lot of troops here. Uh, you know... It, it, uh, it's, it's, it's not that overwhelming because you don't have to start handling all these troops right at the beginning of the battle. Um, you know, it, it, it kind of, like I said, it plays out in a series of chapters where first you're focusing on the area around St. Armand, then Ligny, then Tangrenel, and St. Armand La High, and, you know, those are like the, 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 the front spots of the battle. So it, <clears throat> pretty much all you got to do is set up the set up your defenses kind of like I did and uh, other than a little bit of micromanaging, the defenses pretty much stand hold, hold, hold on their own. You know, you don't really have to do too much. Um, and that gives you the time you need to uh, go and start handling all those troops behind the lines and, and setting up a, a secondary defensive line. You know, no matter how many troops the French are shifting around back here and, and trying to bring forward, uh, it's tough. It's tough for them to come through this because these buildings are really tightly clustered together and it's really tough for them to bring... They absolutely have superior numbers, but it's tough for them to bring um, bring them to bear against us. Okay, so now we see Durette's division approaching. Or at least the cavalry from it. Yep, that's Pagat's brigade. Uh, Marshal Pagat and uh, certainly Brew, the other brigade is probably right behind him so uh, at this point our right is in danger of being turned so uh, I knew they came down one of these roads I just wasn't sure which so we can see them setting up on our stride our right flank, here comes some more cavalry uh, so we're going to have to start shifting some of these troops uh, that we have back here to face this threat.
Now, we don't want to march out and get them. We want them to come to us so that we can keep our lines as close, as tight uh, as possible uh, and stay separated from the cavalry that is approaching. We want to engage the infantry on, uh, you know, the infantry's, uh, just infantry versus infantry. We don't want to have to deal with that cavalry that's approaching. So we'll put up, we're going to set up our lines back behind our squares so that hopefully the cavalry can kind of be cut off from helping out the infantry rather than going out and getting the uh and attacking pagats and bruise brigade uh let's let them come to us so you can see the cavalry is actually crossing the creek and once they do that uh it's going to be much harder for them to support anything going on over here so they're heading this way while you know, the infantry is heading this way. We could deal with the cavalry. We got squares here, no problem. Doesn't matter how much cavalry is coming. As long as there's squares here, we're good. But what we're doing is taking our second line of infantry, and we're going to start moving them over here to meet uh, Durette's division of Durlan's Corps. And so this is probably Pagat's brigade right here. This is probably Brew's Brigade right here. Uh, and we're going to see if we can kind of engage them in this area. So we'll start setting up kind of in here. Hopefully we can get into position first so that we can start firing at them as they come up. Now this is only one division of Durlan's Corps. This is Durette's division. Um, now these guys always appear. Every time I've ever played this scenario, these guys have always appeared. So like I said at the, in episode one when we were talking about the, uh, the Durlan's Corps variant, I don't think these guys are, are, count as that. Even though they're part of Durlan's core, I think they pretty much appear every they, every single time. They're just part of the, the, the Ligny order of battle. Um, but I've never seen the rest of Durlan's core appear. I've never seen any of his other three divisions um, appear. So like I said, I'm not sure if it can actually happen playing the game through the user scenarios tab, which is what we're doing because we're using the, the Grog toolbar. Um, so yeah, I've never seen it happen where you, where the rest of Durlan's core becomes a factor in the battle, and I've never gotten Bulo's fourth core, uh, the, on the Prussian side. Alright, so they've got some artillery here. But uh, because there's a square here, they're turning right around. Um, and they're moving some of their infantry off to the off to the right here. I'm not sure what the point of that is. I don't know if they're thinking about trying to outflank my position here uh, by using the infantry to attack the squares. I'm not quite sure what they're planning yet. We'll have to see how it develops. It's always important to remain flexible because sometimes even the AI is capable of just doing things that you don't expect it to do. <coughs> Whether it's a smart move or a dumb move, it could still be an unexpected move. Alright, so here comes some French. Definitely moving or trying to move around our flank. Too bad this isn't a fort I could occupy. That would be a hell of an idea. Alright, so they want to engage these squares. Can't say I blame them. That's a ripe target for a line infantry right there, is just to sit here and pluck these squares. Well, let's see if we can do something about it. The artillery is unlimbering. We don't want them to sit there for too long. I see some more artillery. This is probably the cavalry artillery. 
moving across the field here. Let's see if uh, we'll keep an keep an eye on where they're headed because if they move out too far ahead of the cavalry and become isolated from other forces, we do have some cavalry over over here, and we may be able to grab them. Nothing really going on at Ligny here. Some French withdrawing. They're pretty close though. As long as they stay there, it kind of crushes any attempts I might make on uh, on uh, retaking that position that uh, in front of the church. So more cavalry build up on our left flank here. But again, as long as these squares are here, I feel like we're, we're okay. And we don't want to get uh, too sidetracked here. Obviously, we still have to deal with Durette's division. All right, so there's nothing further out on our, our right flank here. So pretty much this is the extreme right over here. And we're helping this, uh, we form this unit into line. We're helping, we're shooting into the flank of this unit. Because this square is, no way are they getting the best of it, shooting it out with infantry here. My, oh my, where is all this French cavalry going? On one hand, I'm happy they're moving away from Durette's division. On the other hand, I'm wondering where you got where the hell are you guys going? I'm gonna advance my square a little bit just to protect these guns because this cavalry could just charge right into them here. And these guns are really moving out ahead of their of their uh, cavalry. And when I see isolated targets like that. And the cavalry is turning back. Alright, so yeah, the square is getting the worst of it, but we're shooting these guys in the flank with these guys, so hopefully uh, we can uh, sh shoot enough of these guys and make them break and run. This is tough to going to be come through. There's a lot of buildings here. It's going to be tough for the infantry to move through here. So this unit is not getting the best of it either. So let's split out some skirmishers from the rear unit and kick them out in front of this unit to screen them. There's no cavalry around to the immediate area, so uh, it's probably pretty good timing to put some skirmishers in front of them. And uh, they'll, screen, they'll screen this line from taking too many more losses. Uh, and they'll do better because they're obviously their skirmishers. All right, so the cavalry has abandoned their artillery. Uh, that means uh, that's a ripe target. I cannot resist the urge to try and get these guns. <coughs> All right, so this unit has broken and run. That's good for us. Go get them, boys. And there's really nothing to protect those guns. I have no idea where they thought they were going. Now we have the cavalry pinned up on the other side of the creek. They're kind of blocked by the squares while we're able to uh, take care of uh, Pigott's brigade over here who are in danger of being surrounded. And they are actually starting to fall back, you can see. Here comes my cavalry. Damn, I want these guns. Go get them. All right, and we are charging these guns. Now, the infantry is forming square, but the guns are running away from the square, which is not really going to help them. 
And uh, that volley really didn't do anything to us. So we're uh, we're off and running here. Here we go. And uh, those cannons do not move as fast as the cavalry. So we're just gonna, yeah, go get them, boys. Stopping is not a good idea. So there we go, we took that entire battery. They, those guns ran too far ahead of their cavalry and the cavalry did not uh, did not follow them and pretty much abandoned them and uh, they were they were ripe for the plucking so we're we're completing our encirclement of uh, Bruce Brigade here if we can make the infantry break we should be able to then just charge the guns and get them out of there The cavalry is all penned up now. The entire French cavalry is penned up on the other side of the creek here. Um, Bruce Brigade has not really engaged. I, uh, I guess they formed up as the reserve. But if I can get Pagat's Brigade and these guns out of here, I'll be happy with that. Guns over on the uh, over the right here that are peppering this cavalry here. And again, I just want to move these squares and make sure that the cavalry cannot charge between the squares and get the guns. I want to make sure that the squares' zones of control here overlap, so that if the cavalry comes forward, it's going to be the squares that they have to face, not the uh, and not be able to punch their way through. So that's a nice that's nice and tight. So here we have some of Bruce's battalions now. He's got four battalions, so these must be the other two back here. And uh, we have uh, we have three big lines uh, facing Pagat's brigade. Pagat's brigade has kind of refused to flank a little bit to protect themselves from getting uh, um, outflanked. So our squadron has captured all the guns and uh, we can bring them back. Come on back, fellas. And let's see what's going on over at uh, St. Armand. Cavalry still penned up over here, that's good. activity in the center here. I have siphoned some units away at this point, but this is not a huge amount of activity, and I can always bring some units over from here, which there's no activity going on. So if I need to, I can bring some, this unit over, I can slide this unit over, uh, and, you know, even bring this unit over if I needed to, because there's nothing going on over here. That's the only battalion is over here. got three battalions engaged. We have one in reserve. Uh, Pagat's brigade looks like they're beginning to withdraw. Looks like they're beginning to give way. I'm going to start siphoning some of my guns off the main line here and putting them in here so that we can start to pepper this cavalry. There's still some more cavalry over here. I'm not sure where they're going, but uh, right now they're far back enough that I don't care. I'm noting that they're moving, but it's not really on my mind uh, as far as engaging them right now. So, uh, ugh, excuse me. Uh, all right, so Pagat's Brigade is breaking. Now, I can't go and just advance on them right away because there's guns back here, and I certainly don't want to come into canister range of these guns. Um, 
So we have to get those guns out of there. And uh, thinking about just bringing some cavalry over and getting them into position to run down the guns once the rest of this, uh, as you can see, Pagat's brigade is falling back. Just another quick check of Ligny. Everything looks good. Okay, we have some of uh, Vichery's troops. This is probably Desprez's brigade over on the extreme right. Uh, they haven't moved into the town yet. I have my skirmisher line here ready to meet them if they do so. Uh, but their, their presence has been noted, so to speak. They are out there. back at St. Armand, and that cavalry is still being held at bay, that's good. <clears throat> so here are our exhausted skirmishers once again out of ammo, uh, looks like they retreated. And the French are moving in, uh, moving in towards the church here, and uh, all my skirmishers have pretty much been pushed back at this point. Uh, and they're going to start engaging the church. So the French have been nothing if not persistent over here at St. Armand in trying to keep the action moving and keep pushing forward. All right, so here's another line uh, from Pigat's brigade. We'll start turning our forces to face them. have some cavalry coming over, you can see them down there, and I'm springing them over in preparation for when Pagat's brigade breaks, we can take the guns. Oh, okay guys, uh, let me pause the video here. Uh, at this point in the original, just the raw footage video, I had been playing the scenario now for four hours straight, uh, and uh, I was hungry. So I think at this point, at 1830, I actually uh, uh, paused the game and uh, stopped the video and went out to get something to eat and I came back about um, uh, about an hour later and I picked up and did the rest of it. So uh, I didn't exactly do it all in exactly one shot. I did it all in the same day. I just I, At this point I took like a 45 minute break and I ran out and got some food, ate it, and then I picked it up. Uh, and so I paused the game here at 1830 and that is the end of the first part of the the, uh, the video here. So I will close this and bring up um, bring up the second one here. Okay, let me uh, let me full screen this. Sorry about that, guys. I, I had forgotten that I did that. Uh, uh, so yeah, okay. So this is the second video, and it picks up pretty much in the same spot uh, at 1830, maybe a few seconds later on, because I think I unpaused the game and then remembered to actually start recording. So, uh, all right, let's get this going here. And I, okay, I have the game paused still. And okay, yeah, it's 1830. So I missed about 20 seconds. No, nothing really happened. Uh, So here comes the cavalry, still moving forward, pretty much right where we left off in the last video. So, yeah, that was just a lunch break, guys. I, I, at that point, I had been playing for four hours straight, and I was beginning to get hungry. Uh, so here we are. We still have the Goth Brigade. Uh, their, their central battalion has fallen, and now we're just facing these two. Uh, so I'm deploying some skirmishers to have them deal with this line, the same way we have skirmishers dealing with this line right here. Um, And again, I can't really advance because these guns are right here and I don't want to come within canister range. So what I'm really doing is going to bring the cavalry up so I can just, because there's, there's a big gap in this center right here, I can probably just send the cavalry right through to grab the guns. So 
so here they come. And I'm just letting them walk up. We got plenty of time here. Where is my other, uh... Oh, they're back. Okay. I was wondering where the, the squadron was to capture those guns up here. But they, they appear to have come back. So more French infantry. But again, it's really tough for them to come and engage us here because it's just such a small area over here uh, and with all these buildings kind of clustered. We've really got them kind of stuck out outside of it. Uh, and so we have this, this square here that's being screened by this uh, line unit that's shooting it out with this infantry here. Now we do have some cavalry here, but our squares are engaging them, our guns are right here. I don't think they're going to be able to just stand there and, and, and threaten us. It's not really a threat anyway, because like I said, I'm fine with staying in square as long as I can bring units in front of them to screen them. And this, these, these units here are on the other side of the creek anyway. And I'm just taking these guns off of Take Charge. I had put them on Take Charge to actually move them into that position, but now that they're there and they have targets to shoot at, it's be always better to have guns off of Take Charge if you can, because that allows the gunners to constantly reposition their guns and find the best targets. So if you want to move single guns and you want to Take Charge to move them, that's fine. Um, when you get them to where you want them to fire and they have a choice of targets, then it's good to take them off of take charge because they can constantly shift around and find better targets. And the AI is very good at that. I, you know, I'm not going to sit there and sight in each gun. The, the, uh, the AI is, is just fine for that. Check and see who's up there. Who are we dealing with? So it's pretty much just some cavalry, uh, which has fallen back, and we're basically dealing with just Pagat's brigade right now. And here we are again engaged at Ligny, but they really can't bring a lot of their forces to bear against us. You know, we can hold this out for quite a while. This unit has taken a lot of artillery losses, but I'm hesitant to pull them back. Like, I'm gonna, I think, but, uh, you know, with some of Pichot's units sitting out on their flank there, I'm definitely hesitant against it. But our fortresses are starting, here's all our cavalry now. Our cavalry has made it up, so we can start really, really flushing the rest of that out. I just want to get this Pagat situation in first. You know, I know my cavalry's coming up. I want to see if I can use them. There they are. I want to see if I can use them to get the guns. And just by virtue of sending the cavalry forward, we might cause these units to either form square or to break and run themselves. And then we can kind of take over this hedge position right here, and uh, that will pretty much secure our right flank. So all that cavalry that was moving off, they just formed up back here. I mean, it doesn't look like they're going to participate at all. All right, let's send these. Let's send this cavalry forward. And yep, this unit is breaking at the just at the approach of the cavalry. So our way to the guns is clear and open. And a lot of these guns are facing this way. Uh, so maybe we can get a nice clean strat, clean run right here. Doesn't appear to be any cavalry anywhere nearby. This looks like a nice clean run.
Let's see if they're gonna try and hook up and get out of here. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. Looks like this is a clean run right here. And also, Pagat's other battalion is also breaking and running. So we have outflanked these units at this point. And we've taken all their artillery. That's two batteries of artillery that we took. Good job, boys. Good job. And looks like we're going to try and hit these guys, too. Well, this unit is formed square. This unit is running away. This unit, I think, is going get, to get hit. Yep. We're running them down. And there's another battalion approaching, but that's kind of a tight spot to try and charge through. So let's just bring this cavalry squadron back. They've gotten 286 points. Uh, we've run off all of Pagat's brigade. Some of Bruce's brigade is falling back. And we have now outflanked this position. We just need to secure it with these units here and kind of set up in here. <clears throat> And here comes one last battalion. This is probably one of Bruce's uh, battalions because I think we, I think we trashed the God's Brigade. <coughs> so we uh, maybe we can use this cavalry here to make them form square, which looks like is what they're doing, and then bring the skirmishers up to shoot them to pieces. All right, so the square didn't get to too bad. They lost 27 points. I'm just pulling some of my cavalry out of the uh, firing range of some of this artillery that's down here. Get them behind the trees. All right, see, now these guys are trying to form line so they can shoot at the skirmishers. But what I'll do is bring the cavalry up right behind uh, these skirmishers and see if I can get them to form square. So the, the skirmishers will be screening the cavalry, but we might still be able to get close enough to form have them form square. Oh boy, what is all of this? What is all of that coming up? We're gonna have to take a look at that. The Saint Armand area is definitely getting reinforcements. We're getting pressed pretty hard over there. All right, so there's the cavalry. Skirmisher unit got pushed back. We'll move them back into position. Doesn't appear to be much of a threat going on anymore. Couple of outlying units here, here, here. But uh, they appear to be units that have been thrashed already and are just pulling back. There's a view down there towards Ligny. Everything's pretty stable over there. So we brought more of our infantry up, some more guns. We can uh, start filling out this uh, position some. And these guns have unlimbered and decided this is a better spot, but. I'm really not interested in your opinion, guys, uh, on where you want to set up. Set up where I tell you to. I'm making the decisions here. So we're going to move these guns forward. We'll swing these guys over so we can get some, uh, some squares in here. 
and we are basically right behind Ligny now. So we don't have a, when we do have to pull our troops out of Ligny, they're not going to have far to go to get back behind the safety of these lines here. Uh, and when the French come out of Ligny, they will pretty much be have this staring them right in their face. I'm just creating a little space here because of where I want to I want to be able to place the cavalry. Which is up now. Here you can see them all up here and that's probably more than enough cavalry. And as I said, I'm just going to be placing one squadron each in between these squares. And I'm just going to take command of all of them and and uh, put them where I want to put them. So we'll have two squadrons in between that space right there as it starts to bend around. So anything that approaches that area is going to immediately have to stop and form square. We'll send one one squadron out on the extreme right. And uh, then, yeah, I'm just going to be placing squadrons in between these squares here uh, where there's no guns behind them to act as horsey forts. So that anything that comes up will be in range of these this cavalry squadron and will also have to form square. <coughs> and uh, while this is all going on, guys, I'm just going to run to the fridge real quick. I'll be back in one second. I am back. So you guys can see how the secondary line is now taking shape. And the French have still really made no attempt to try and, and really make a, a hard push into Ligny. Show's division, after capturing the castle here, they seem to just run out of steam. Uh, you know, they could have tried to come around our flank here, they could have tried to come through here. Granted, this battery would have made life tough for them, uh, but they really didn't even make an attempt at it. So our cavalry is now moving off to all its positions uh, within the, uh, the network of fortresses here. What the hell is all this? Can we please go and see what's going on here? And it is the Imperial Guard. Let's see, who do we have here? A whole lot of trouble moving our way here. And it's the big boys. These are the these are the chasseurs of the guard. These are extremely high quality troops. We do not want to engage these guys uh, at in hand-to-hand -hand combat. These are all level eight elite troops. They will slaughter us. The one thing we've got going for us is they're approaching into this bottleneck here where it's going to be tough for them to really bring their numbers to bear. Hopefully we can get them to deploy in line and shoot it out with us and just bottle themselves up in here. It's a lot better than if they were approaching from in here because then we'd be in real trouble. So, okay, we have, yeah, this is Moran's division of the chasseurs of the, of the guard here. They've got more artillery coming up. Uh, so, things are about to get damn serious over here, uh, very shortly. We're going to have to see what it is they're going to do. The fr whether they're going to just move through the front French units here and try and give it to us, or they're going to deploy and back as a reserve, I am not sure yet, but it is always scary when you see the Imperial Guard moving towards you. 
They are no joke. Alright, so that accounts for the chasseurs of the Imperial Guard. Where are the grenadiers? Alright, so they are deploying into line. This is good. I would rather have that than them to try and just come forth and, and come forward and, 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 you know, sledgehammer us to death. You know? I, I'm not sure how the AI... If they really, if the AI really understands troop quality and how useful it can be, you know, it may not consider these troops to be any different than any other troops in terms of how it handles them. Uh, which, if so, uh, does great favors for us because if they're just going to try and engage in a firefight with us, it really isn't any different than engaging any other troops because all their troop quality basically does in that instance gives them better morale, it'll let them stand there and get shot at longer without breaking and running, um, but it's it's not going to be as bad as if they, this is certainly not what I would do with the Imperial Guard, I would, I would come forward and I would clear this all out with the bayonet, I would use the Imperial Guard the way they were meant to be used. So, uh, yeah, Hulot's division over here on the Tongrenal area is just, you know, repeatedly being repelled. Still pretty quiet here at Ligme. It looks definitely looks like Saint Armand is going to be the new hotspot. Yeah, okay. The Imperial Guard are just everywhere. So, uh, looks like we have the Chasseurs over here. I'm not sure what this is here. I uh, by the flags. I don't. I don't think that's the Grenadiers. It could be the Young Guard. A lot of artillery over here. Thank God they haven't deployed yet. Kind of facing the wrong way. Well, the one good thing about this area here is very hard to get your troops into a cohesive formation and, 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 you know, and attack the actual town itself because, like I said, the, the, the church is still here and we still occupy it and it's very tough to move around it or, or, or encircle it or, you know, and without getting shot at in the back by the troops inside which have an all-around facing. We've got some more skirmishers up. I'm trying to protect the square as best I can. I've got skirmishers in front of them. Uh, but, you know, they're, 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 the guard is starting to move forward now. It's going to get hairy here. This but this is a strong setup. If I can hold this and not get this outflanked, I would love to hold on to this position for a while because my artillery could really do a lot of damage. The question is how hard is the Imperial Guard going to push forward here? Because if they want to, yeah, like this is okay. If they just want to form line and shoot at me, okay, I can deal with that. If they come forward in a bunch of assault columns and decide to start charging, I'm, a, I'm screwed. I'm going to lose this position. So 
these guys are now charging the skirmisher unit. These guys are moving forward. These guys are in trouble. Time to go. Time to get out of here. The French are really pushing hard on this position now. You know, I do have a giant battery here. If I can hold this position. Okay, we're gonna, uh, the square is in trouble. I'm going to move one of these units and set up on this unit's flank. Ah, uh, they're being charged. Square is not a great way to be charged. However, this is not a guard unit. All right, they retreated. That was they surrendered. That was complete luck. We're just lucky that unit is so big. They have 660 men. Let's reform that quick that square quick. See if we can get some skirmishers back out in front of them so they don't get shot to pieces. So the French are definitely trying to focus on this square and this area in here. If they can collapse this square, the road through to my artillery is open. So far, we only have one battalion of the Chasseurs making any movement here, but I'm watching them. We have a whole, the whole Imperial Guard back here. And the cavalry is now coming forward, but they'll be stopped by the square. I recognize that the square is in trouble. I'm actually going to try and swing this, swing this fortress back a little bit because I have, I'm protected on my flank here by this square, and see if I can start to move the square back behind the safety of some of these buildings so that they're not getting shot at by on on two sides by these units out here. So we're going to try and withdraw the square. Uh, there's no cavalry around here, so it should be safe to do so. And we're going to try and shift these guns back and to have them face this way more. And this square should do fine at holding this cavalry at bay. And that's what I wanted, to turn the guns so that I could start getting uh, some canister shots on these units. Looks like I'm going to start shifting a second battery in position here. Because it is very possible at this point now that the French will break through at least some part of this line. Luckily the, the, ch the chasseurs are still sitting back there. The French really did a terrible job of deploying this artillery back here. They have some guns forward, but we're pulling back so that our guns can still be effective as the French come forward. Like that. We're just blowing pieces into these units, but these we're moving away from the artillery. shifting so we've turned our fortress basically from facing this way to now facing this way and uh, hopefully our cannon can really shoot this the hell out of these units in here so 
So these French guns are now moving off to this area, and I'm happy about that. It's going to be much harder for them to be effective over here than it would have been to set up on here. Again, advancing the square just to block the avenues of approach for the cavalry here. This is no problem. We can shoot this up all day. Alright, I'm thinking that's the young guard back there. I don't know where the grenadiers are. So, uh, our little trick worked here with the skirmishers. We got this unit to form square by bringing the cavalry right up behind them. if we can start advancing our line here and uh, securing this position here. This is holding nicely. We really wrapped up Durette's division pretty good. Meant to close the mini-map there. That happens sometimes. All right, so the chasseurs are on the field here, but they're just sitting there. <coughs> we have, uh, we still have possession of the church. We've shifted our square now so that we can really start using our artillery to bomb away on these units. Uh, we've once again got some skirmishers out in front of the square to screen it. But now the units, some of these units are shifting out on the right here to, uh, to try and shoot up this square. And this is a good move because I can't get too careless about screening the square with skirmishers uh, to protect them because the cavalry can just come in and run the skirmishers off. I just want to keep these small units close to the church in case this unit, these units in here start to retreat. Because they no longer have any skirmishers screening them like we had before, so they're directly engaged. And we really want to hold on to that church. Alright, so turning our square to face this direction has helped out a lot because we were we're able to bring our artillery more to bear against this area here, and we're shooting these guys up pretty good. The only thing I'm worried about now is this left square is in trouble, because now there's a whole bunch of skirmisher units out here shooting at it. So I want to be able to bring skirmisher units to screen them at the same time this cavalry that's going to be able to just run in and run the square the skirmishers off. So I would like to not see the French focus on this area too much, or it's going to be rough. And as you can see, they are sending more units out to the right. I'm happy any time I see these old guard units form line and just sit there. By all means, just sit there. Do not get involved. All 
All right, so it's uh, 1,900 hours, four hours into the battle, I believe. Or, uh, five hours. I think we're five hours into the battle now. It's, uh, yeah, 1900 hours. What is that? Uh, 7 p.m. So we are deep in, and here come these troops towards this area again. That is not what I want to see, because honestly, this square is very vulnerable. Because here's this cavalry. See? That as soon as I try to bring the skirmishers up, this cavalry move forward. And yeah, I'm shooting them up, and yeah, that's worth points, but... You know, this, the, the, this left square is very vulnerable right now. And, you know, fortunately, the right side of the secondary line is pretty much all set up at this point. So if we lose the St. Armand position, or if it becomes just too hard to hold, we can fall back. Uh, and that part of the line has already been set up. But, uh... I don't really want to give up St. Armand yet, because it's not it's not too weak yet. We still have the church, we still have the objective, we still control pretty much all of the town. Uh... And the, the, the old guard here still hasn't really made any kind of serious effort. So, just because this one square is in trouble, and it is, I still don't really want to surrender my position yet. I'm still getting a lot of good shots off from this artillery. Uh, we're blowing this unit to pieces. See, and here comes the cavalry. They're determined to get rid of these skirmishers because they know that this, uh, you know, retreat guys, get out of there. The one good thing is the creek will really slow the cavalry down. And there they go, turning around. So a lot of this cavalry is moving off. Maybe I can sneak some skirmishers back up here. It's tough because there's cavalry everywhere. When you know some of it falls back, but more of it comes forward, and they're just persistently stopping me from screening the square. And so the square is taking losses from the skirmisher units out here. Uh, And, uh, you know, I can't move them. They have to be there to protect the guns. So now an old guard unit has actually moved into range and formed line, and now they're opening up on the square. That's bad. We have, So I'm bringing the skirmisher unit forward again to try and screen them. But, you know, I always have to worry about that cavalry coming forward again. Artillery is still getting off great shots, though. We can at least see if we can bring in, uh, there's no cavalry near here. We can at least see if we can get some skirmishers up to screen this square. See? Look at these guys. They're just determined to run off every skirmisher unit I set up. And even though they're going to get shot up by the square as they come forward, you know, ultimately they can just run off again and, uh, and my square is still going to be getting peppered by this, uh, infantry out here. You know, all these guys out here, you can see they're shooting out the first line of the square. And these guys are just going to turn around and run away. So this is, a, this is a hairy situation over here. But I still hold the church, I still hold the whole town, I still hold the objective. This is still a viable fortress that's set up here. You know, my artillery is still inflicting a lot of casualties. I don't want to give this up yet.
I'm just trying to get some more, get these skirmishes back up here. You know, but like I said, it's tough because, you know, one cavalry unit runs away and another one starts coming forward. See if I can shift the facing and have the side that's been shot up face the cavalry, and have this more solid line facing uh, facing the infantry, so I can at least get as much fire as I possibly can. You can see the front side of that square uh, has been reduced quite a bit. So again, I'm going to try and get some skirmishers up in front of these guys to screen them, and see how long they'll stay there before the cavalry runs them off. Luckily, other than bringing the old guard up here, they haven't really made much use of them. All right, so we've got this we've got this square screened again. This unit has fallen away, so this unit this unit is okay. Are you serious? To get over here, we're going to go all the way around here. Get real. All right, so it looks like all the cavalry has run off over here. Maybe we can maybe we can get some skirmishers out here and screen this unit now. The other thing we could possibly do is pull the fortress even further back. here. All we've got is one little square here. We're still shooting them out. split off a skirmisher unit to put in front of this cavalry so we can start suiting these guys up again. And we've also got this unit forced into square too. This cavalry's in a good spot here, I just want to protect them. Come on boys. Get in position. Guns are all tired, but they're doing their job. I think things are pretty secure over here. We'll just start moving some units up. We could bring these skirmishers up in here. There you go. Have them shoot at these units, too. We'll move these guys up into the hedgerows. And let's go back where the important stuff is going on here. And again, more cavalry comes forward and runs my skirmishes off. They're, they are a perpetual nuisance here. And this, this square is really getting shot to pieces. Now, what I'm doing here is just keep sending skirmisher units forward. Uh, much like I did at Katra Bra uh, in the Allied scenario. Just hoping that eventually the cavalry will, after a whole bunch of charges, um, 
you know, will eventually their morale and their fatigue will fall to the point where they just they won't charge the skirmishers anymore. Um, but it's just not really working out because there's a lot, uh, there's a lot more cavalry, and they just keep coming. So I'm pulling the square back to try and get them away from the infantry. Uh, and, and, and maybe the infantry, if they move forward, will come into canister range, and then we can even the score up a little bit. <coughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The old guard is still mostly sitting out there. This cavalry, this French cavalry is being a real pain in the butt. Boy, did the French really, they really botched up their opportunity to bring some artillery forward. They set up all their guns back here. If they would have set it up in here, they would have, they would have really been able to, to start breaking this fortress up. They set it up all the way back there where it's not really effective. And they still have all this cavalry over here that they haven't even begun to use. So now here where I'm putting the, the skirmishers, here I'm baiting the charge. I'm trying to get some of this cavalry to waste charges on a square that's not really being fired upon. Uh, so that they come forward, they drive the skirmishers off, and then they get shot at by the square. So I, I'm trying to basically present a more inviting target to the cavalry by putting skirmishers in front of this square so that they don't focus on the other square. You know, I'm kind of trying to dupe them a little bit. Nothing really going on at Ligny. So we have 21,000 points. Uh, we now have passed 19,000 points. We have enough for a major victory. And, oh, we have a unit that's out there shooting at our squares. Oh, and they have taken a nice chunk out of them. No problem, we'll send out some skirmishers and that'll be the end of that. This is why I bounce back and forth uh, between all these different areas, so that if anything like this develops, I can, you know, immediately take steps to rectify it. And once we get these skirmisher units out here to uh, to cover these squares, uh, this battalion will likely fall back, and that'll be the end of that. And they're already starting to fall back. <clears throat> and we'll bring some more skirmisher units up to just to cover this approach uh, from this bridge here. And that should largely be uh, all we need to handle this situation over here. Check Ligny on one more time on the way back to St. Armand. And uh, all looks pretty secure here. Now I'm recalling this skirmisher unit because they're out of ammo. Rather than resupply them, 
all I'm going to do is kick out a new uh, uh, skirmisher unit, and you can see they have more ammo now. 17 rounds. It's not a full complement, but, you know, it's enough. We could probably engage these guys and get them out of there. I'm going to pull these guys back, back behind the lines now. Uh, it doesn't look like Pacho has any intention of exploiting uh, a route around our, our flank here. These units have been sitting here for an hour now. They're not doing anything. Uh, and I'm just trying to protect my, my units from all this French artillery out here. There is a lot of it. And back to St. Armand we go. Let's see what's popping. All right, so these, we now have a skirmish unit out in front, uh, screening the square, which has really been shot up. But some of this infantry is moving closer. We, we may be able to get them into canister range. We have a lot more old guard units out here now, too, I notice. I definitely can hear that canister going. And the French have taken the church. No! They have a guard unit inside the church. This is not good, because now they're basically free to come around any of this, and they're not going to be shot in the back. We've got some of our units shooting at the church, but uh, we need to actually start moving over and, and trying to get fire to multiple sides of it. It's going to be tough to shoot a guard unit out of here. The thing is, is it a whole guard unit, or is it just a skirmisher unit? Some of our guns are beginning to fall back. With the collapse of the church, uh, it's going to be a lot harder to hold this. So my guns may have a good idea here. It might be a good idea to start pulling some of this line back. Maybe we can set up here and still hold some of the objective uh, and use the creek as a natural barrier because the French are really starting to work their way around here. They've captured the church now. There's nothing to stop them from coming through the town. Uh, and it's going to be very hard to hold this. So, yeah, you can see I'm actually bringing my guns back. I'm actually starting to move this position. So, yeah, all the guns are beginning to fall back to the opposite side of the creek. Uh, and at the very least, I'll be able to get the square that's get, uh, getting shot up out of here. I'll be able to start to bring some of these frontline troops back to a safer position. Um, because there's nothing to stop the French from coming now, because the, they've taken the church. We still have the objective, and I would like to hold on to that for as long as possible. Uh, but it's, it's, it's very important to know when you're kind of when you're in trouble and when it's time to fall back. Uh, with the collapse of the church and some of my guns withdrawing, it's almost like my guns were telling me, it's time to start moving back. All right, so we secured this position pretty much. Oh, look at this, a cavalry charge. Nice. So the French, the ca French have charged this unit and are forcing it to fall back, uh, but they can go no further because there's a square here, and they're going to get really shot up. And the square doesn't need to be screened anymore because the infantry that was here is gone. Uh, so it doesn't matter now that they, this unit has fallen back. Because this unit was stuck in square now because our cavalry is over here. So this isn't, this isn't so bad. These guys are pooped anyway. If we can get them back, they can rest. Move them over here in case we need them again. But with our cavalry right here, this unit is stuck in square, too. Uh, so the French have possession of the church. And they are working their way around our flank. Uh, it's one of... Uh, 
a French skirmisher unit has surrendered to us. But without our artillery there now, it is time to start pulling this line back. So you can see I'm slowly, we've got two batteries back here now. This is a nice, this is a nice position across the creek. We can get some skirmishers set up in front of them uh, and use these squares to keep this cavalry at bay over here. Uh, we may be able to hold on to this position a while or longer. Nothing going on over on this side of things really. French are still really making no real attempt on Ligny. In fact, I was kind of surprised by the how timid they were in once they captured the castle. I am surprised that uh, Pachot's division really made no further attempt at trying to take uh, the, the right side of Ligny. And even Vichery's division's uh, attack wasn't really that impressive. They sent Le Capitaine's brigade into the center of the town. They didn't do too much. Desprez's brigade on the far right of the town, they really didn't do too much, so they really didn't make that big an attempt on the, uh, the town of Ligny itself. They're pushing much harder for St. Armand now, uh, and as I said, we are withdrawing uh, and removing ourselves ac across the creek here. And we're using our skirmishers and these little units here to kind of cover our retreat. Ooh, the French have withdrawn. Look at this, it was just a skirmisher unit in the castle. So, we can actually retake the castle now. Uh, the church, I'm sorry, castles in Ligny. But now that we've abandoned a lot of this forward position here, I'm not sure how viable it is to really continue to hold on to the church. Uh, we'll try. Some of these units are breaking over here and falling back, so... I may have I may have withdrawn a little preemptively, a little too quickly. Uh, I didn't know that it was just a skirmisher unit inside the church. I thought it was an entire old guard unit, uh, and it really was just a skirmisher. So we were able to actually shoot them out of there and, and retake the church. And I'm going to send two units into the church now. Who has the objective here? I think it's I think it's him. I think he's the senior officer over here. Yep. Okay. So he's got about four thousand points from that objective. So uh, while well, we've got a few minutes here, we'll continue our little setup here behind Ligny. Uh, luckily, we set up from right to left, and most of the right side now is completely set up and ready. So if St. Armand does fall and we need to fall back, that part of the line is already very strong. We've got cavalry here, here. We've got our artillery set up. So, you know, if this part of the line falls, we can withdraw and... Uh, and be safe behind that position. 
I thought it was a lot worse than it really was. Uh, I thought a, a guard unit had actually gotten into the church, and really it was just a skirmisher unit. So we were actually able to shoot them out of the church and retake it. Um, but regardless, uh, this position ha this position was getting really hard to hold anyway. So <laughs> it's not entirely awful that we've withdrawn. And instead, we've shifted our squares to the left to move them away from the infantry, but still be able to engage the cavalry. So now these skirmishers that are out here aren't as in, in, in much trouble as they were before. And the French have begun pushing through the town again. they got a skirmisher unit here, and a couple of units that are moving in near the church. Nothing's going on over here. There's nothing left over here. We completely destroyed Berthazine's division. Um, Durette's division of Derlon's corps is, you know, Pagat is routed. Brew has got kind of locked up in square, or some of his units are routed too. So this this is pretty much over over here. Alright, so we've moved our squares further to the left now, so that they can intercept this cavalry further away from the infantry. And we can start maybe withdrawing some of our skirmishers down here to screen the gun line, and invite some of the French to come in here. Because with the infantry cut off from the cavalry now, if the infantry moves into this position, at this point we have a lot of guns back here that can really pound away on them. The question is, are they going to come forward? Right now, it looks like they're happy to just stand there. And, uh... It looks like the French have pushed uh, into the town a little bit. We have some units here. Um... Check the Tongrenal area one more time here. That's pretty quiet. I can see some cavalry moving off in the distance here. I wonder what they're getting set to do. None of this is moving around though. Just this cavalry back here. So you can see we totally cleared out, which is those skirmisher units. We cleared out those units that were attacking our squares. I knew that would work, no problem. God, we have so much artillery back there too. I'm not even I'm not even using half the stuff I could be using. There's just no reason to. This situation here is completely under control. It's really nothing to worry about at all. And again, the French have taken the church. Looks like they sent those two units running. I don't know where they are. Oh, there they go. Routed units. Yep, they are done. I don't know why they routed. They weren't doing that bad. It is a small little unit, though. It's only 40 men. So, uh... Yeah, the French have taken the church, and uh, I, I don't know how much more of an attempt I, I go to, 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 to retake it. Because now that we've pulled back over here, the church... I kind of want the French to come in here so that we can bomb the crap out of them with all this artillery. But, uh, oops, I missed my mark. Anyway, 1930, guys. I missed it by six seconds. Um... So that's, uh, that is, uh, yeah, two more hours of the battle, so uh, only two more hours left to go. The battle ends at 2130, so one more video uh, in the series before we reach the end. 
uh, as you can see, things really escalated in uh, in this video. We went from holding everything no problem uh, to uh, having to fight on our extreme right against Durette's uh, division. We did pretty good there, but uh, the French have really started to make a push on Saint Armand now. They've brought up the Imperial Guard. Uh, they have their cavalry on our left uh, and gave us some hairy moments up here. But now that we've withdrawn and we actually have the squares screening against the cavalry here while the infantry is still over here, uh, our position is actually a little safer now, even though we've, we've lost the church. Um, so, yeah, what I would really like to see is the French start to move in here because this creek here is going to act as a natural barrier against movement because it will slow them down to such a degree when they're trying to cross it. Um, that as they come forward into this area here, uh, the artillery, we have two batteries back here, uh, will really start to pour fire and uh, really put a hurt on units if they try and come in here. Uh, so we'll have to see what the French are going to do in the, uh, in the next video. Um, so uh, that's it for now, guys. We have achieved enough points for a major victory. The main thing now is to protect our lead, withdraw if necessary, uh, and... Uh, you know, earn points where we can. Uh, so uh, I will see you guys for the fourth and final uh, video for uh, the Prussian Battle of Ligny uh, in the next video. Take it easy, guys.